QXC alive. There was one battle cruiser. If there was slightly more, just two or three might have been able to hold. But we'll have to pull back. So Kiwikaki, who was pretty far in the um, behind zone early on, coming back thanks to this big switch to Colossi. And all the while, aware that Zealots and Templar were the main core of his force. Adding in Stalkers when necessary, but still Zealots and Templar. Still more Templar. Would not be surprised to still see more Zealots coming up here. Mm, excuse me, coming up here. Oh, sorry, my voice choked a little bit. Just watching nice unit compositions is just a very emotional thing for me. And I don't know if anyone knows this, but that would be awesome if you could feed back an orbital command. I imagine this only lets you target a unit. Yeah. Um, no, it just says the target. That would be awesome if you could feed back an orbital command. That's definitely going on my Pimpus plays list. So QXE doing the large retreat of the barracks. This is actually a, a very nice technique to do uh, if you ever have buildings that aren't doing anything. Because notice that these two buildings actually have damage taken away from them. Which means that when Kiwikaki attacked, some of the stalkers were shooting at the barracks. You know, just sort of doing their own thing. Now QXE is in a little bit of crisis mode, um, obviously, as he currently does not really have a mining base. So I think that this sort of technique, just trying to put a little bit of pressure on going to be very, very effective. Still would like to see more drops by QXC. I don't know how much he got the chance to practice the style, because I know that QXC is the sort of person who really likes playing around with a ton of variety, but if he ever does want to make this a more standard play, I would absolutely 100% advise just more drops and more aggression. So, I mean, god, I love this mix by Kiwi Kaki. I mean, still... It, basically, I feel like that if he is between 80 and 150 food, he's only making Zealots and Templar. Uh, getting maybe some Stalkers if he needs to. No Sentries. Could probably afford a, a Sentry in that mix. Guardian Shield always going to be at least a little bit helpful. But once he gets to these big numbers, huge, huge Colossi shifts. Very sexy. Uh, wouldn't, a little disappointed that this Forge isn't as active as I'd like it to be. That's another thing that's cool about a Protoss who wants to have a nice, um, sort of cheap, efficient army. You can just save all your Chrono Boosts and just Chrono Boost the hell out of one Forge, and you end up getting a lot of extra upgrades. And a huge confrontation. Oh, God, Storm is just so good. And, of course, <laughs> apparently all the tanks just really wanted this Watchtower dead, so... Rather than shooting at the main army... Uh, apparently a small barbecue happening over here at the right side of the map. More zealots being warped in, and I really want to point out that there have probably been 30 or 40 units that have been warped in off this single pylon. He's really one of the big heroes of this game. And I just would like to reemphasize how much better um, everyone's Protoss play will be when they start just spamming pylons all about the map. And QXC trying to get in a good spot, but I mean, with all these storms, and look at zealots, the fact that everything's always shooting the zealots lets the Templar and the Colossi get into prime position. And uh, as QXC uh, would obviously confirm, uh, if you're at 14 to 120 food, it's a little bit too big of a stretch to hope for a comeback. So, of course, he types in the good game. So, uh, let me just loosen up a little bit. And let's go ahead and take some questions from the amazing, wonderful, fantastical viewer. Um, so, Arco says, Why didn't QXC transition out of Marines and instead go Marauders and Hellions once Kiwikaki went Mass, Zealots, and Colossi? So, um, l let, me let me even ask a more general question. Why didn't QXC um, transition out of um, Marines and Tanks and do, you know, anything, really? And I think the answer is that when he saw a pretty much only gateway unit mix, he knew that, you know, hell, if I just get some good um, hunter-seeker missiles off, and if I just siege my tanks up and micro my marines around them, I'll be able to kill this all-gateway force. Because remember, stimmed marines are some of the highest damage outputting unit in the game. They just kill stuff so fast, it doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, it does, because the game would be imbalanced otherwise. But um, even though they're a little bit weak, they just do so much damage. And what's interesting is that I have um, also practiced a lot of this mass heavy marine um, with tank and some raven play. It's really, really fun, really effective. And you almost never see this huge transition by Kiwi Kaki to, you know, um, do this huge switch over here to get so many extra robotics facilities all of a sudden. And what's interesting is that it happened around the time that Kiwikaki had, you know, three or four bases or so. So it's going to be a little bit later into the game, but now it's still actually there. 
And um, to go for some other big unit mix, once QXC did see this huge transition, I think would have been a fatal move. Because if you have all barracks, like if you went to his base, there were like 15 barracks and none of them had add-ons, right? And there were these two factories, I think it was later three, and then these two starports. And if that's what you have, and you all of a sudden have lost your whole army, it's kind of a bad choice to say, all right, time to start making some extra factories and start getting the Hellions and the upgrade, and let me begin getting add-ons so I can start getting uh, Marauders in here as well. Because in that time where you're trying to do that, I think it would probably take about a minute to get all that up and operational. By that time, you've already lost... Um, all your expansions, then it doesn't really matter what you do, because you have no money. <laughs> so um, that, I think, is always a key issue. And that's a lot of the times the reason you see a player continue to make the unit that feels logically bad. It's because if he tries to get anything else, he'll die immediately, so his only hope is to stay alive with these units and just be scrappy. Um, so a lot of that comes down to the transitions of your strategy, which is something that we have to, you know, learn a lot a lot a lot about over time um so let us let us divine um um let's see here from lancer 723 says day nine when facing a terran using a build like qxc's or even terran mech is it better to build immortals to absorb tank damage or colossi for their superior range and damage now that's an interesting question now um, again, what I want to point out is it's not so much the unit that makes us all excited, right? It's not, oh, I have Colossi or I have Immortals. Um, and I, Because in this game, it's the fact that Kiwi Kaki suddenly made four Robo Bays that made these Colossi so strong. Um, I will say that in my experience, I have not really tried a lot of mass Immortal plays. Um... I'm more impartial to more gateway units and then throwing in phoenixes or throwing in colossi. But um, that is something that I think needs a lot more experimentation. I think that immortals are, similar to the colossi we saw, gonna be a late game transition. Because if, if my Terran opponent has a lot of marines and any ghosts at all, he'll just EMP all my immortals and they die immediately to that. Like, insta-death. So, for instance, um, I would probably say a nice Zealot Templar, and then into a lot of Immortals. Again, feels lean, and then feels uh, like a clean transition. You're completely vulnerable to Banshees, but pff, whatever. Um, I still think that if your opponent, like QXC, is going for a Marine tank build, that then um, Zealot Templar into Immortals, like two or even three um, Robotics Facility Immortal would be pretty decent uh, against a, uh, a reasonable tank count. And, of course, against any number of Marauders, because that's fairly one-sided. Hmm. So, um, let us see. Do, 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 do. Oh, here's a great question by Kaderis, who, as usual, always has good questions. Who says, um, Colossi and Templar seem very redundant. What makes you choose one? or the other. So I actually don't think that they are um, quite redundant. I don't think that, um, I think that's a good idea to try to avoid redundancy, but first of all, the Colossi have much longer range than um, than the Templars. You can storm from a gigantic, or excuse me, attack from a incredible distance. Also, Colossi are extraordinarily expensive, uh, but at the same time, the Colossi can just attack. It's not like a Templar where you need to have enough energy, and if you miss with the storm, it's kind of bad. Both of them generally are good at mass numbers of small units, um, but the the Templar are a little bit more mobile, just because they're so inexpensive. They're very, very cheap. I mean, just only 50 minerals and 150 gas. So they sort of integrate well with getting lots of Zealots, or even getting a lot of Stalkers. Just a lot of any non- gas heavy unit but the problem with the colossi is it eats up just a lot of money so colossi is a very mighty unit but um um colossi are very expensive so if you're trying to get them early you're generally going to have a very packed dense army if you're getting templars early you're going to have very mobile fluid all over the place army um so at least so there's some of the points that i would address um 
Also depends a lot on your opening. That's the last thing that would make me choose one over the other. For instance, I love Dark Templar openings against um, Terrans. I think they're very, very stable. And I can get Templar really easily afterwards because I already have almost all the tech structures done. If I am opening Immortal Drops, I like transitioning to Colossi more because I already have half the tech done. So we will just take a few more questions. Yeah, let's just take two more questions. The money number two. Let us see here. Um... Let us see. Oh, you know, here's here's a question um, by Rabiator. And I'm actually going to split it. I'm going to actually add a question to his of my own. Uh, where QXC had a ton of barracks. Wouldn't it have been a good idea to wall off his third and fourth bases with him to protect the tanks? I mean, absolutely, yeah. I think that that is a good way to deal with your excess buildings. You saw me talk a little bit about that. Of, oh, well, he floated his buildings into the battle. And they took damage. So that means that it was good that they were there. Because... If they're shooting your barracks instead of shooting your units, 